Hi folks, it's Becky here. Um, I am going to talk us through the next part of our songwriting process, which is melody. So, um, what is a melody? Well, <laughs> it's a collection of notes or sounds, vocal or otherwise, that form the top line of your song. So they have to be coherent, they have to be tuneful in some way, and of course, they have to provide us with some sort of meaning. So the, the melody itself is important because it's part of obviously the magic making of the song. So Kenny talked about the structure and rhythm and Andrew talked about chords and of course we've got Claire's lyrics. So all these things together create the song and it's when all these things are working in tandem, when they feel organic, that you start to get that magic of the song. And a lot of time I think we can struggle with melody um, for a few reasons. One, there is a lot of pressure to, to get a good melody and sometimes we can mistake quantity for quality, shall we say, when it comes to melody. Um, and of course, um, melody in many ways carries meaning. And we're going to look at the ways in which melody can carry meaning uh, in the next few minutes. So think about the ways that melody or tone, for instance, can create meaning. Well, tone can be defined by, by more than just how we sing. Um, tone can define genre, for instance. Uh, tone could define emotion. And also it can actually define the seriousness or, of the song itself. So for instance, if I sang, let's just use three chords, G, C and D. I sang a song that was like If I sang a song that sounded a bit like this and it really had a lot of power in the lyric and the vocal and the singer then you might think okay that sounds a wee bit more poppy but all I did there was change the tone Kenny can kind of showed you about the flow of a structure. Well, melody can have a similar dynamic structure. So when you're thinking about that, you're looking at how can I change my vocal to show what the structure of the song is. So for instance, if I have a verse, we might go, this is the verse, I'm singing it. up a little bit melodically. So what am I doing there as I'm showing the dynamic shift between verse and chorus and what that tells the listener is this bit is the explanatory bit, the verse bit, where we're kind of going through the motions. And this bit, the big dynamic loud bit, is the part where we're solidifying what this song is about. So often that's what choruses do, and Claire showed us that lyrically, we'll go through that in a minute, um, how the chorus can be the kind of, the, the connecting point of the song that says, this is what this song means, this is what it's about. Um, what about being a good singer. So a lot of the time we think, well, if I want to uh, create a good melody, I've got to be a really solid singer. But actually, I can show you examples of songs where singers aren't actually that good, but the melody holds tight. So if you want to have a wee go at singing, a wee go at performing, and you feel that you're not that confident a singer, the best thing to do is just find the attitude inside yourself, for want of a better word. So how can you um, bring a coherent melody without a strong vocal melody? There's lots of ways you can do that. Sometimes rhythmically can be a really good idea. So you might have like a... I don't really sing, but I can give you a melody over this year. I can give you a... I don't really sing, but I can give you a melody over this year. I can give so a lot of the 
this can be implied in the performance and that's really important so I would advise everybody to have a wee go at singing if they haven't sung before because it's always a good idea to just feel how it would be for you to, to be the front person of, of a, a piece of music or whatever what are the keys to a good melody well very importantly structure and we've kind of talked about that so in our song we've got our intro verse our chorus our verse or chorus our mid eight and, a, and our, um, a double chorus and an outro some of the greatest melodies ever written were written within five notes and here's an example here for you Once in all, I'm no good for you I've learned to lose you can't afford to so in this song Billie Eilish is actually only walking up and down five notes. She didn't go That would be too much, it would be too muddy. So a really good um, way to approach a melody is with simplicity. And you might have noticed in that example I gave you there as well that there was a lot of repetition. Not a lot of note change there. Why is that important? Well, repetition, again, helps to solidify structure. So when we're doing a melody, we need to think about the structure. Structure matters. It's what the listener hears. It's how they can connect to a song. So another way you can define melody, and we talked about it a little bit before, is rhythm. So here's a really good example of a rhythmic melody. You care what they know. Your first name is free. And again here you can hear that Pharrell is using two techniques here. So he's using a really solid rhythm. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Yeah. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Okay, so then he's using an octave leap. So that is a, a, a key trope that lots of artists use, this octave leap. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Okay, wonderful. Easy to do. Well, if you... <laughs> it's easy to do if you're a singer, the octave leap, but the rhythm element of uh, that kind of melody making easy for all. And it basically is a call and response, that song. So you've got, you could do that on your own guitar, you could do that with your keyboard, where you've got like a... Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So the guitar calls and you respond, and all these things make really interesting rhythmic melodies, and that's another way to create melody. So what do we know? Well, we know that you don't have to be a good singer. You just have to find structure. You have to find some sort of simplicity, and there has to be meaning in the melody. So depending on the genre of your song would depend on how you might present the melody of the song. Okay, so let's go back to our song. Okay, so we've got Andrew's chords here and we're going to create a melody based on his chord structure and Claire's lyrics. So here we go and we're going to use repetition. Connected and cosy, together we pray. Love, peace and So that might be quite a decent melody for that part. What we're doing there is we're repeating a lot of the notes. Da 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 There's rhythmic repetition there and also note repetition. So that's providing a lot of structure. We mess it up a little bit in the third section. So we've got eight lines here. Line one and two connected and cosy together we pray. The melody's the same. Line three and four, love, peace and marriage, forever and a day. The melody's the same. Line five and six, we mess it up just slightly to give it a bit of variance. Da 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 Okay? And then line seven and eight, back to the original melody. Da 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 Okay, so we're going to get into our chorus now. I'm going to go C, C, C.
Okay, so I kind of done that on my feet there a little bit, so I worked it out as I went along. So maybe I would try and put those two together and see if they flow well now. Okay, so let's try verse into chorus now using those two melodies and listen for all the repetition, but also the rhythmic changes that mess it up a little bit. Okay, we've got our intro, which we'll do four chords for. And you could put a melody here if you wanted. You could do a little ooh, perhaps, or something. Don't have to. Some people like to. Like me, I like to fill all the song with noise. <laughs> but some people like a bit of space, so we'll give it a bit of space um, for Andrew's sake, because he likes a bit of space. So this is our intro. C. E minor. and that is the middle eight. Andrew has assigned the chords D minor, A minor, D minor, G. So my instinct would be to change the rhythmic flow of the melody a bit here. So right now we've got da 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 and we've got that da 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 -da. So I'd maybe want to move more towards the da 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 for the middle eight just because it would allow the song a bit more colour essentially, by not actual colour, by colour I mean there would be a lot more changes in it and that would be helpful for that structural flow, so that structural flow which can apply to melody as well as structure itself. So let's see what have we got, so we've come out of the chorus, so we've went united we flow. starting to feel it starts quite slow melodically but it's starting to feel like quite a feel-good song and having that melodic structure can really help with that so when you are actually moving to the point where you've written your melody of course you could mess around a little bit but having that really formulaic structure with the repetition will be really really helpful okay cool I'm quite happy with that Great. So there are some ideas for melody, but the most important thing about melody is probably to keep it simple. Don't be afraid to use your voice, even if you feel like you're not a singer, um, and use repetition as much as possible within each section of the song. So the verse should sound the same, the chorus should sound the same, and your middle eight should sound altogether different, but the same. Okay, good luck. Take care. See you soon.